Hello, I'm Thad Barnett with Sheffield Metals and welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I've got Dave Stubbs and Tom Sutherland from Sheffield Metals talking with me today. How are you guys doing? Good. Super. This is another Q&A Monday, and today we're going to be talking about oil canning. And I think we're going to have a really good conversation because there's a lot of moving parts that we could discuss. You guys tell me a little bit about your personal experience in the industry. Tom, why don't you go ahead and start us off? I started off in the industry back in the mid-70s with uh, Reynolds Aluminum and just kind of grew up through the industry. Um, branched away from them and... And kind of got into what we're doing today at Sheffield in 92. So as far as uh, coil and sheet sales, that's uh, strictly been my uh, background since 1992. Okay, Dave. Um, my background is I started in the metal industry in 1987. Uh, I installed for roughly 18 years, uh, moved into project management. Um, Put quite a few fires out, uh, uh, you know, relative to this topic, and um, uh, put most of those fires out. Some didn't necessarily get put out, so uh, been in it for a while. Um, so first, why don't you guys tell me, uh, for those that don't know, what is oil canning? Uh, oil canning is basically uh, the waviness in a flat area of a panel. It's uh, a lot more predominant or predominant in a standing seam because of the flat area. Uh, the bigger the flat area, the more puckers and ripples that you see in the material. And basically, oil canning is just stress in the steel or the aluminum or copper or any kind of metal that you can roll form into a roofing product. It's uh, pretty much inherent to all uh, any kind of metal or all products. You said the, the bigger the flat area, um, the more opportunity there is for oil canning. Uh, why, why is that? Well, basically, if you've got any kind of uh, uh, ridges or uh, any kind of valleys or anything like that in the material, as in a corrugated panel, if you, if you work a corrugated panel, it's going to have a lot more dips and valleys in it spread the oil canning or the stress of the material out throughout the whole panel. And it's, you just don't see it. It's there, but you don't see it. So the stress created by that, uh, by the forming, the, the forming of the metal into panels, installation, all that goes into um, what attributes to oil canning. Absolutely. And, it's, it's not just the metal itself. It could be the decking and the underlayment and, you know, it's the building in square. Uh, anytime you twist or move that material, it's going to, the metal's got to go somewhere. It's got to, got to release. So. so Dave, why don't you tell me, are there ways we can minimize oil canning, uh, when installing or any considerations in that area? Absolutely. Um, you can minimize some of the oil canning just, um, by, um, predictably installing in, in, in pattern or, um, cause, uh, the cause can be overdriving the screws, um, things that underlying issues, the, the dry end has wrinkles in it. Um, you know, assuming that there is a dry end, you know, on the install, um, anything that's on the deck or on the substrate is going to be a, a direct, you know, transparent replica of what is underneath. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and that's just inherent to the thin gauge of the metal. Um, good installers will, will do a great job of drying it in, making sure there's no wrinkles in the underlayment and, and make sure that there's no debris or sediment underneath the install to, to make sure that it's, you know, a, a better install. Um, you know, a, a lot of it is, is the light on the roof. Um, it, sunlight really is our um, is sort of a factor as to how the the, the reflection comes off the metal. Um, 
one of the inherent factors that that creates or uh, is a is a visual to oil canning um, is, is the lighter colors are are less reflective as far as um, what you see in the oil canning. Dark colors are um, are just not very friendly when looking at a, you know a, a dark bronze or a black. Uh, you can really see the oil canning. And that attributes to the aesthetic uh, appearance of the oil canning. Yeah, I've seen photos of, of the same house in the morning, and it looks great. And then I saw a photo of it in the evening, same house, um, but just the way the light angle changed, uh, all of a sudden you could you could notice the oil canning, and it was incredible how how that stark difference was. Absolutely. You know, a couple other things that you can do is is. Um, build some rigidity in the panel with striations, pencil ribs, and those are in the standing seam flat of the panel to um, sort of limit limit the oil canning of the flat. It, it minimizes the flat. You can narrow the width of the of the standing seam. You know, going from an 18 to a, a 16 doesn't seem like a dramatic difference, but it can dramatically change the aesthetics of the panel um, just in you know the oil canning. So if uh, the thinness of the panel um, attributes to oil canning, can you use a thicker gauge metal? All, all, uh, all material is subject to oil canning. Uh, yeah, uh, when you get thicker, it does minimize it. Um, that's why I particularly like in a 26 gauge, which is a 019 thickness, uh, primarily used for residential that we supply. We do that in a low gloss uh, canner or a low gloss paint system, and so that kind of minimizes the uh, appearance of it. It's still there, but you just can't see it as well. Um, 24 gauges or 023, 0234 is primarily used for the commercial market now. It is it's predominant there, and then when you go into like a 22 gauge or an 029, then it also reduces the amount so, of oil canning. If so, a high gloss finish is does that make oil canning more noticeable? Yes. Anytime you got any kind of gloss or glare on it, um, that's it. Just telescopes it. it you can see it. A uh, whole lot better. That's why they, you can use stucco embossing to knock down the glare, and that will reduce the appearance of it also. Just anything to make it more dull. Right. So the duller the finish, the, uh, uh, your eye just can't pick it up as easily. So, Dave, with your installation background, you said you put out some, some fires with oil canning. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about one of those? Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things where you can, in the from the contracting side, from the from the submittal side, you know, there's always the uh, obligatory attachment of you know technical bulletins as far as oil canning is 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 not a you know a means for rejection, um, but inevitably it'll come up because um, somebody thinks that they. Um, the job should be perfect. You, you know, the, the expectations of, of any project is to be perfect, especially on the residential side. Mm -hmm. People take their homes very personally, and when it's when it's not perfect and it's not what they envisioned, um, I I think it, you know they get uh, emotionally attached to uh, the expectations, and and it's really an inherent condition. Um, it's it's too bad that uh, you know our industry takes a hit, but with the the lack of knowledge of all the trades, whether it be the carpentry or the steel workers or, um, you know, bricklayers, masons, um, nothing seems to be very straight anymore. Nobody, there's, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, perfect, uh, substrates. So, uh, I think it's, you know, sort of a, a misnomer that, that you're going to have a perfect, uh, standing seam roof when what you're putting it on isn't perfect. Right. So, well, how, how would you go about conveying that? You know, you, you're going to say, you know, this is going to be a, this is going to be a great looking roof. Um, but just know that this about oil canning. Well, the main thing I'm, you need to do is try to get your contractors or your architect or your 
homeowner to agree to go with at least pencil reels. Uh, Stripes are the best tool out there for minimizing uh, the oil candy. So if they know going in that, that, you know, if they want a completely flat look, it's going to be very hard to achieve. Right. Um, and it can. I've seen roofs that are just as flat as they can be, and you get further into the coil, and the coils, you know, vary in the way that they're produced, and there's stress points in different parts of the coil, and the bit in the center of the edge, and they have to release somewhere. A lot of my customers make uh, make their customers sign off on it before they even do the project. Uh, they'll say, well, this is what you're going to get if you go with a flat roof, uh, you know, with, with a flat panel, with a flat area. And a lot of architects just won't stray from that. Um, but, you know, if you get it down and say, this is what you're going to get, uh, then you've at least got um, some kind of ammunition and things start curling. Right. There's that fine line of what is excessive. Um, that's, that's still a relative term. Uh, what my eye catches is, is probably different than what, what Thad's eye might catch. And Tom's been in the industry so long, uh, he's, you know, he's, he's probably seen all, if not, you know, everything that I've seen and more. So, so I, I you know, it's an, it's an inherent condition of thin gauge metal. So as a, as a building owner, um, is there a way to tell if oil canning is so excessive to a point that you know there was installation error? And how, what steps do we need to take to remedy that? The main thing about it is when they're putting it up, if, if they roll that panel out and uh, it is not oil canning when it comes out of that machine or if they lay it you know, on a flat surface or on the run-out tables, and it looks fine. And if they get it up on the roof, and then they see it uh, on the roof, and you'll know that it's, it's, it's not the metal. It's the uh, underlayment or the masters are out of, out of whack, or there might be dips and valleys in the, in the plywood that you're applying it over. Um, and if, if that's the case, then, uh, you know, you have to go back and, and get the uh, substrate redone. Uh, also, when you get into um, um, wanting a completely flat roof, you can use backer rods and stuff like that. But uh, as far as trying to figure out what the problem is after everything is down, uh, it, gets, it gets kind of difficult, especially with the, uh, you know, with the different sun, the way the sun hits during the day, it heats yeah. up. That metal will move. Um, aluminum moves more than steel, but uh, that metal can move a lot throughout the day. Hey, Dave, you alluded to something earlier. Um, why do manufacturers not consider oil canning a cause for rejection? Because there's nothing wrong with this, the structural integrity of the, of the roof system. Generally, it will not cause leaking. Generally, it won't cause for material failure. Um, and, and so within the system, um, we generally in, in the industry consider oil canning is going to happen. It just depends on what, at what degree mm -hmm. that's sort of where the manufacturers have to stand because we're not always in control of what gets put on. Uh, like Tom says, when it comes out of the machine and, and it looks good and it looks flat and it looks, you know, as a superior product, and something differs from when it's run out of the machine to when it's installed. Um, it could be material handling also. We see a lot of guys uh, minimizing their labor and you know trying to lift long panels with the minimal amount of guys. And that can cause stress and, and, and cause buckling um, and stress in, in the panels. And that's not good either. That, that can also be a, a problem and cause oil can. You know, the main thing is that uh you know, it's, it's clear in the industry that you're going to have it. There is absolutely nothing you can do about it at some point. You know, if you had edge wave going in when they ran the panel, or if you had camber or center buckle or something like that, 
But all of that should be called for. Uh, it, it goes up on the roof. It comes out of that machine flat and square. Um, then you shouldn't have any issues with the material itself. Um, but if you've got it coming out and a uh, and it looks bad, then we need to take a look at it. Cause it it's mm -hmm. camber. Uh, camber should not be in there. Uh, the edge wave, we're trying to catch all of that at the plant before it goes out. Everything we buy is a tension level for the mill. And it's all graded material. It's all uh, uh, it meets the ASTM A792 for the for the javelin. And so if we do our part and uh, and supply the proper metal, then if they can do the proper installation out there, we should be okay. Yeah. You know, Tom Tom has covered a lot of ground with with um, the processes at the mill. Um, roll forming, there's always um, a certain educational process as far as um, if, if the machine is in alignment, if that machine is, is forming the, the product properly, you know, what's the end product coming out of the machine? It, it should look very similar from when it runs out of the machine to when it goes on the roof. Mm -hmm. um, the, the remedies, you know, post install are, are never good. Um, they attribute to a, a generally a lot more damage than you know than the cause of of what they're trying to get to or, or their remedy and so I you know I, I don't like to drive around around my my state or, or my region to and see oil canning um, it, it always gives our industry a little bit of a, a black eye um, but uh, the, the guys that can really install will, will catch it early and and, and remedy it prior to its install. So uh, a lot, a lot depends on the installer. That's, that's a, a lot of, of where we can really catch it and, and cut it off, you know, cut, cut it off early. And on that note, I think I should uh, wrap this up for us. Uh, Dave and Tom, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks guys. Have All a good right. one, Tom. Subscribe to the Metal Roofing channel to stay in the loop for new videos. We post every Monday and Wednesday. Check out our blog on SheffieldMetals.com. We have a really good one on oil canning, and I'll link that in the description. Comment with any questions you have to be answered in future episodes. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and I'll catch you next time.